Hey there, my name's Josh. I'm part of the MakeSwift team. In this video, I'll be showing you how to integrate MakeSwift into a custom storefront from Shopify, making it visually editable. Along the way, we'll recreate this plant store to have a layout that's made in MakeSwift and products from Shopify. We'll use Vercel to deploy this example host and GitHub to store the example code. All right, let's jump into it. Head over to our Shopify landing page. From there, you can head into our GitHub repository where we have a readme with details for the rest of this example. You'll find instructions for deploying to Vercel, which is what we're gonna be doing, as well as using this repo locally. Let's go ahead and open this deploy link. And the first thing we'll be prompted to do is create a Git repository. So since I already have a GitHub account, I can go ahead and do that by hitting create here. And the only thing left to deploy our host is gather these environment variables. The first one is a MakeSwift site API key. This can be uh, retrieved from MakeSwift by creating a new site. So let's head back over to MakeSwift and do that by opening this little modal and hitting create new site. Here you're prompted with a question of whether or not you want to integrate an existing Next app or integrate later. Since we don't have a Next.js app deployed yet, I'm going to hit skip and start building so we can integrate later. And then I've gone ahead and made this e-commerce template. It's basically just a bunch of plant images and copy related to our store. So we're going to use that. And once our site's created, we can head into settings, find the host section, and grab our site API key, pasting that back into Vercel. The other two variables are coming from Shopify. In section three here, I have detailed where to find those variables in your Shopify dashboard. For your store name, that's just an identifier for your store. Uh, and then for your access token, it's uh, how you can authenticate with a Shopify storefront API. You'll need to register an app in the Shopify API, but this link will help you do that. And for our example, I have already created a read-only store that I'll be using called MakeSwift Example. If you would like, you can follow along with the same credentials, um, but you will need to eventually create your own store in Shopify. So keep that in mind. We'll copy these values into our Vercel deployment. And once that's done, we can kick off the deploy. I'll meet you back here when that's done. Okay, so our deployment has finished. Looks like we have a 404 page, but that's all right. We just need to publish some pages in MakeSwift. So head into your dashboard and copy the new deployed URL. Back into MakeSwift, we can paste this URL as the host preview URL, and we can add the MakeSwift path name. This MakeSwift path name is used within our uh, freshly deployed app to uh, live reload the app within this iframe and let us edit it. So let's hit save and we can refresh. And once MakeSwift is finished refreshing, our all of our custom components are in the sidebar. The first one I'm going to use to start building this e-commerce site is the product list. This is just a list of products from our Shopify store. You can see it has some different uh, style related controls as well as a collection and count control. This collection control allows us to select what collection is being displayed here. And the count control allows us to change how many products are being shown. This width control then allows us to change like how um, what the width of this component is. And in general, yeah, these panels are just used to control our custom components. Let's jump into the code and see how that's working. All right, let's go to product list. Here you can see the component that was being shown within the MakeSwift UI. It's just a regular React component that is getting some products from context, using the collection ID to filter those products, and uh, the count to slice those products. And then it's just mapping through them, creating links to each of them. Your next question is probably, how are our controls mapped to the props here? Well, that happens in our register components file. Here you can see that same product list control it's using a style control to update a class name, using a comma box control to change what the collection ID is, same as this prop right here, 
and then it's using a number control to update the count. These controls allow you to change the props that are being passed to your component instance on the fly within MakeSwift. Also, a little note about this comma box control. It is using an API route I've created that queries the Shopify API. So then it gets our options like our pots collection or our plants collection, and that collection ID is then used to filter through our products. Another question um, that you might be wondering is how are our products being provided to our component via context? To demonstrate that, I'm going to jump into our path here or our optional catch all route. What's happening in this get static props is we're getting a layout from MakeSwift, products from Shopify, and passing them into our page. Then within our app.tsx file, we're taking those page props and we're providing them via context to all the components that are dropped within our page. OK, so back in the MakeSwift UI, let's switch this back to plants. And I do want it to be the default of four. Our homepage is looking good. So let's, let's uh, publish it and see what it looks like live. Great. So now, instead of that 404 page, we actually have content coming from MakeSwift. You might recognize this URL, and that's because it's the same URL that we just deployed to Vercel. We're missing a header, but that'll come with time. Let's update our product template page so that when we click on our products, we don't get a 404. OK, so back in MakeSwift, we have this product template page. If I do hit publish here, you'll see uh, a new URL, which is underscore, underscore, product, underscore, underscore. This is the layout, or this is the path that corresponds to the layout we're editing in MakeSwift. But if I go back to that product page for Monstera, and I wait for ISR to complete, you'll see that same layout being used in our dynamic product route. So what's happening on this dynamic product route is we're fetching that template layout from MakeSwift, and we're combining it dynamically with the product from Shopify. All right, I will add a component like product name here and product images to hopefully just solidify that concept for you. We'll hit publish, refresh after ISR. Nice. Here's our um, Monstera product name and product images. And if I also change this to be, for example, Blue Lily, and then refresh, Here's our Blue Lily product. OK, let's check that out in the code to see how it's working. Here we have the product dynamic route that I was talking about. It's grabbing our layout from MakeSwift based on a path name that's in our config. You can see that's that underscore, underscore product, underscore, underscore value. And then after that, it's using our slug to get a product dynamically from Shopify based on that slug. Again, these values are passed in and used in app.tsx to uh, be sent to our components via context. All right, so hopefully uh, this is making a little more sense. I'm going to add some TLC to this page so uh, that it looks a little better. And yeah, you can follow along. So I'm going to move this product name into that box. We have some other components like product price and description, breadcrumbs, and an add to cart button. So one thing that's great about custom components that you register in MakeSwift is that if you use a style prop, you can drag and drop them just like any other components, component primitives that MakeSwift provides. So that allows me to add some spacing here easily. And I'm also going to want to add column gap here. And I haven't check this on mobile, but yeah, OK, we're a little squashed. So I'm going to break this into a column layout. And last but not least, we'll add this product list below. I do want to show the pots collection and Atomax width. 
this page is looking a lot better. So let's jump back into our live version. You can refresh. Great, okay, so after ISR completes, we have our product page with all the details, an add to cart button that presumably works, and also our product list below. The last thing that this website needs is a header component. So let's go back into MakeSwift and we'll work on that next. So I do have a header custom component here. This is different from our standard navigation component in that it includes cart functionality. Um, and by cart functionality, I mean uh, this header will control the state of our Shopify header or our Shopify cart. So um, that's sweet. What we need now is to add a max width to this header. And then it would also be great if we could add a link from this down to the featured section. To do that, we'll need to add a ID to this box. And then in our header, there is a link control that we can use to scroll to element, in this case featured, and we'll add some text to that. How this is working is similar to how we're uh, registering product list. Instead, we're registering, in this case, uh, our header component, and we're giving it a list of shapes that include a link and a text input. In the sidebar, this link is this little section that allows you to change what our link does. And the text control is just this uh, input that allows you to change what text is shown on the screen. All right, great. So the last step to this header component is making it a global component. This will allow us to head into our product template page. And instead of using this header and specifying that link in the max width all over again, we can use our new global component to inherit that max width and link that we already specified before. All right, so that was a lot of information, but I think our e-commerce site is coming together. Let's check it out live. Nice, okay, here's our, our header component. There's that cart I was talking about. It allows us to update quantity and remove items altogether. I will wanna buy two of these big blue lilies. So I'll add this to cart. You can also check out the homepage with the header that we added from before. And from here, we can proceed to checkout. This will redirect us to a Shopify hosted checkout experience. And it also concludes this tutorial video. I hope this video was helpful for you in understanding how to integrate MakeSwift into third parties like Shopify. Um, thank you for watching to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.